Hey guys, welcome back to Games of War. Today's episode, we're going to take a look at my top five Vita RPGs, in my opinion, of course. I want to say it's been too damn long. I've missed you guys terribly. I've missed doing this. I've had a shitty couple of months, man. I gotta say, these bastards trying to take my dog away from me. For those that follow on Patreon or follow me on Facebook, I've kind of gone over it. I don't want to bore you guys, but I just want to say that this video is dedicated to Cassie. Uh, Cassie is Zach's mom. Uh, we were high school sweethearts, and we got married shortly after and had Zach obviously and she got into some bad shit after about two years of marriage and we had to end up divorcing and she wasn't in Zach's life for a long time and uh, she got into some really bad shit. September 20th she passed away and Zach's been really messed up about it. It was really tough for him. If you guys have had a loved one or a friend or you've gotten in a fight with someone and haven't spoken in years, even though it may seem trivial, nothing in life is trivial, just please try your best to make up. Uh, reach out, call them, make amends. Life is too short. Before you know it, somebody's gone, and I don't want that to happen to any of you. Uh, love your friends. Love your woman, your boyfriend. Thank you for sticking with the channel. Let's go. All right, guys, starting things off at number five, we've got Lost Dimension. Now, this is a strategy RPG slash visual novel hybrid of sorts. Uh, very underrated, in my opinion. It definitely got decent reviews. Nothing crazy, but... It seems to be forgotten. I don't see much talk about this game. It's not brought up ever when discussing great Vita RPGs, so definitely got to give it some love here on the list. Now, the strategy RPG gameplay is definitely, definitely not going to win any awards. Don't think like Fire Emblem or Shining Force where you're taking place, the battles are on a grid and you're kind of going in squares. Uh, think something more like Valkyria Chronicles where you have kind of like a, a free movement of sorts where you can attack, you can use special moves, special abilities, uh, some characters fly, some characters walk, uh, some use swords, guns, knives, it just depends. Uh, all characters are different and if you're next to a character that you've formed a bond with through the character dialogue and cutscenes, you're more powerful, team attacks. So it's your standard uh, strategy RPG gameplay. A little sloppier than Valkyria Chronicles if I'm being honest, but uh, the gameplay is definitely serviceable. Where, where this game really captured my attention and imagination was in its storyline and its character progression and character development. Now, this game you're playing is a guy named Cho who's like 18 years old, and he's a part of this special team called Sealed. And Sealed is a group of kids put together because you all have different special abilities. And there is a crisis at stake. There's a evil guy called The End, and he kind of refers to himself as like a supernatural entity. And he's got you holed up in this tower, and he's threatening to kill billions, you know, destroy the world. He's already done some shit where it's like you know, catastrophe-level stuff. And for your powers, you've been chosen. Now... Show has the ability to use vision, where you can kind of see into the future or get in the minds of others and get uh, critical information, so he's highly useful. The end is just like a sadistic bastard who's hell-bent on destroying the world. Now, as you make your way up through this tower, level by level, clearing out the enemies, going to the next level, you're put in a room with a group of all your, your teammates, and you must find a traitor each level. And there's a guy that's betraying you, he's a traitor, and you've got to snuff him out and then kill him. Uh, so it's it's crazy shit you know these guys that you've been fighting alongside and, and using teamwork and survival that one of them is betraying you and you must find out you know weed out which one is the betrayer and all decide on it and then kill them it's it's crazy shit and it gets more intense as it goes on and it's like this moral thing you know like is it my for sure can i kill this guy is, is this really him is he really the betrayer is I mean, kind of nerve-wracking shit and you use your special powers your vision to kind of go into the minds of others and kind of get clues and decipher uh, hidden messages and see things and see visions and it's it's really cool determining you know who the traitor is and there's multiple endings and branching story paths depending on if you pick the wrong person really piecing together these clues and really digging deep in the psyche of other characters and finding out their weaknesses and betrayals and, and their dark secrets and it was just a really cool system. The character development was really good. I liked the dialogue between the characters. It was pretty well written. Uh, the characters were you know kind of cliched but that's to be expected these days, but they were pretty original as it is too. They they all were interesting. I liked all the characters, and it was really tough choosing a, a traitor. Sometimes it wasn't always very clear, so I thought this mechanic worked very well for the game. You combine that with the rock-solid strategy RPG gameplay, and you've got a real winner. Uh, definitely something special with the story and, and picking the traitor and that moral choice of, of killing a teammate that you just fought alongside. It really affected me, and I really enjoyed the story. Lost Dimension is definitely worth your time if you're into... RPGs, visual novels, or strategy RPGs. All right, coming in at the number four spot, we have got Grand Kingdom. This is the Grand Edition. This was available exclusively on the NIS website. Uh, this has got so much cool shit packed into these two boxes that uh, there's something for everyone in this special edition. From the hardcover quality art book 
to the beautiful posters with a real high quality uh, paper. Uh, you've got some amazing pins, uh, soundtrack CD, some great stickers, a ton of great stuff in this. Definitely a great value. I know Grand Kingdom itself is not very much story focused, so I'm usually into more story driven RPGs. But when it's a game like this, that kind of takes me back to playing Dragon Force and the Saturn, where the game play kind of takes place on like a almost like a board game layout to where you've got like a little peg as your uh, army and you kind of move along the different spaces and then the enemy moves as, as you move. And it's uh, the battles take place on kind of like a Coda Princess or Guardian Heroes type plane where you've got three different planes you can switch between. And then you've got different character classes that uh, do different things like combat, straight combat combos, uh, laying traps, setting traps, and uh, some characters have bows and arrow, you know, swords. I mean, there's combo canceling. There's there's kind of like different strategies for each different kind of character class. And there's a big emphasis on class and class leveling up and changing classes. And it's all about the combat, which is very enjoyable, which it, it damn well should be when the game takes place. You know, that's the bulk of the gameplay experience is the combat. Uh, very little story. There is four kingdoms that are all at war and kind of vying for position and vying for power as a dominant kingdom out of the four. And it's got a really cool online component. I'm not sure there's not that many people online anymore playing it but in the beginning it was pretty active and you kind of pick an army and you go to war and there's other people online you're gonna be going to war with them or against them and you're gonna take over different castles different strongholds and you kind of team up with other people and there's a set number of moves that you have to take over this castle and if you fail to meet those requirements you'll fail the mission uh, some great rewards and great exclusive gear that can only be done online through this war mode um, i love dragon force back in the day it was just a game that kept on giving in terms of its battle system and strategic uh, sending units out to certain uh, areas to capture or recruit more or send them out to battle and that's kind of what this feeling gave me the combat is great the combo focused battle system was really fun uh, great looking visuals production values through the roof on this uh, tons of content to keep coming back for more if you're into rpgs that focus solely on combat light on story but just amazing character class uh, character development and really investing into these armies and getting attached to characters not because of storyline or personality or uh, twists and turns but because of your bond with the way they fight they're watching the character go from a lowly level to ranking up his class into a full-fledged warrior that's this awesome specials and you can kind of customize their special moves and customize their combos that is where the genuine bond comes from this game is watching your character grow into that fighting machine and upgrading them all along and i fell in love with grand kingdom i put about 70 or 80 hours into this and i haven't even scratched the surface so tons of content great rpg grand kingdom is definitely highly recommended so coming in at the number three spot we've got arno surge ode to an unborn star now this is a beautiful limited edition that was available exclusively on the nis website uh, it sold out really quick and it now fetches insane prices on ebay thankfully the ps3 version is still very affordable so if you do want to play this game there are other options available now, I fell in love with this Arno Surge right away, and my love for this kind of game dates back to Arch Nelico on the PS2, uh, the dive system that introduced me to what is now today known as the cringe. Over-the-top dialogue, very sexual in nature, very japanese -y, and it is in the dive system. Now, the dive system was kind of gameplay mechanic that was very visual novel-like in its approach, where to get more information, to get better acquainted with your female party, to get more character development, you kind of dive into their subconscious, into their psyche, and it was handled very oddly as a, you inserting yourself into them, and they think, oh, oh, please be careful, it's my first time. I was like, what the, what the shit am I playing? This is insane. It was my first kind of introduction to that kind of over-the-top dialogue and I, I found it freaking hilarious i can see why some people are like what i'm not playing this is fucking this is perv shit i'm, I'm out but I, I totally dig it i think it's hilarious and i i can't get enough so the dive system returns in arno surge however it's called genometrics to be honest with you this game in my opinion is more of a visual novel than it is an rpg sure it's got a battle system but the visual novel elements are so fleshed out in this the character development is so strong that these genometric system is just spot on man the dialogue is so very well written you can tell that whoever wrote these sections had a lot of passion for these characters they are fully developed fully explored there's multiple dialogue choices and branching paths and there's all kinds of awesome song magic to learn which song magic is your main force in battle and it helps you win your battles consecutively concisely clear out a whole dungeon with powerful song magic 
all through the dive system, the genometrics rather, and it is awesome. It's still over the top and it's crazy sexual laden innuendos. It will make you a little uncomfortable if you're not used to this kind of shit, but for us seasoned pros, it's no thang. Uh, Arno Surge has also got some amazing like hot spring sections where you get like basically naked and get into these hot springs and it's more character development, uh, diving deeper into the personalities and getting more character development. Uh, these sections are some Vita exclusive, you know, touchscreen, boob rubbing. It, it's it's pretty over the top, but you know what? It's a solid RPG. Very sci-fi in nature. You wake up on a ship, kind of like out of like a cryostasis or a cryosleep, and your ship has been out adrift in outer space for a number of years. You're trying to find a new planet because your home planet was destroyed, when all of a sudden your ship is attacked by like a winged uh, alien race known as the Sharl. Now this attack splits your faction of, of people on this ship into two divided camps one where they are not going to stand for this shit they're going to take the fight to the Charles. they don't, will not be controlled told what to do and another camp that's kind of almost cult-like where they just want to say oh you know we want to coexist and we want to uh, save ourselves these guys are going to kill us they're going to wipe us out if we don't tell you know listen what they want us to do we're going to obey and it's got some religious like undertones in the story too which i found really cool the church is very prominent in this game breaking the story down further at the beginning of the game you start off as delta and Cass, playing as this duo for a while into the story until you get to earthus and ion then you kind of take over at playing as them. Two different perspectives, both very well defined in their story. And as you get to a certain point in the game, you can kind of switch freely between them. The cool thing about Earthus and Ion is one of the characters is kind of like an avatar. Uh, and the players in the game are very well aware that there is not somebody in this body. It's somebody else like you, the player, controlling them. And it kind of dives into the story and kind of overflows into the story and takes this into account. And there's a lot of cool kind of almost like fourth wall breaking stuff to where they know somebody else is controlling this avatar. It's really interesting stuff. Very well written once again. Uh, for an RPG fan that is looking for great graphics, great music, one of the best soundtracks I've heard, bar none. Uh, an amazing story with very well developed characters, very well written script, fleshed out, uh, sci-fi tones, great battle system. A little bit on the pervy side, do not hesitate to pick up Arno Surge. What drove me crazy about this initially was that I could not play the prequel. Uh, Seal No Surge, which was a visual novel that came out in Japan only. It really drives me crazy not knowing what the hell happened in the game before this. And they try to say, oh, you don't need to know. Yeah, it's, it's kind of essential. There's a translation out there. I read it and it really helps flesh out this backstory. So if you can give that a read, if not, still jump into this game. Don't ignore it. It's an amazing RPG. I love Arno Surge. Number two, we have Tales of Hearts R on the Vita. And now this is a port of a DS game that came out in Japan, Tales of Hearts. Uh, the Tales of Hearts R being an extended uh, reworked edition with additional cutscenes, dialogue, uh, new scenes added. Uh, this was a GameStop exclusive here in North America, so it was a very limited release. This is the first game in the Tales series that I have played that is not in fully voiced English, which is a big letdown for me. I just, I can't get with the Japanese dubs. I cannot do it. I cannot get into it. I much prefer characters speaking in a language I can understand. I can bond with the characters easier if I can hear their emotion and what they're saying and understand them. Just a personal preference. I know a lot of people prefer and stand by, swear by the Japanese voice acting, but I just can't get with it. But I love all the Tales of games. I have every entry released to this day, all the collector's editions. I think it's the best battle system in the RPG business. I absolutely love the characters, the character development, the skits, the environments, the music. Absolutely a huge fan of the Tales of games. This is no different. The storyline in this is really the highlight of the show for me. Even if I had to read the whole thing, it was still really enjoyable. Uh, now, in the past, there was these two planets, Organica and Mineria. Now, Mineria was at war with itself, and they were using the inhabitants of Organica as a source of food to feed these weapons called Xerums. Now, these Xerums were weapons designed to infiltrate and take over people's spirias, which is basically their like mental state, their soul and crystallized form, and they use these weapons to destroy them and infect them with the thing called despair. Now, when you meet characters in this game and they're infected with despair, they're just like zombies just wandering around, no emotion, just sad. Uh, they're still aware of what who they are and what they're doing. They're just completely depressed, no motivation for anything, and basically just like useless. Now your character core has a special ability of being able to cure broken spirias, and that's where the game opens up. He meets a couple of characters, a girl and her companion, and she is infected with despair early on, and he attempts to go in there and heal her, and in turn shatters her spiria, causing it to fragment. Basically his journey across this planet attempting to heal this girl, heal others along the way, find the origin of the Xerums and why they're still infecting despair, kind of 
fix the planet, a whole backstory is going on in the back, but the battle system in this game is a highlight for me. One of my favorite examples of the battle system is the chase link mechanic where you're able to combo enemies up into the air and kind of follow them up into the air and perform these amazing combos and the time that you choose to end the combo or keep going ends in some awesome judgment links and some great special moves and finishers. Completely amazing combat. Core is a great character. The skits once again are on point with the right amount of humor. Beautiful character development. Uh, excellent pacing in this game. I thought the story was very well done. A very interesting backstory of these two planets and the war that raged long ago and these different spirits and how they became to be broken and despair and these ancient weapons and how to combat them. All in all, very interesting game, very interesting story. Tales of series has a fan for life in me. This is another great entry. Not up to the same quality that I've been experiencing in these new PS4 ones. Tales of Basaria was amazing. Zestaria was not too bad, but it's not quite up to that quality. I mean, it is a DS game after all, but they've really polished it up in the Vita. It looks great. The voice acting is the only thing that brings it down a little bit for me, but if you are into the Tales of games, Tales of Hearts R is a great entry into the series, a great story, great characters. You can't go wrong with this one. So for those of you that own both a PSP and a Vita, you are treated to one of the most amazing epic action RPG series around, and that is the series of Ease. Now, myself growing up, I didn't own a TurboGrafx-16 or a Turbo Duo, so my first introduction was E7 on the PSP. It came in a brilliant, beautiful box set here, and I just fell in love with Adel as a character. Lightning quick battle system, uh, no random battles here, everything is action-based, combos, magic, uh, great level design, I absolutely loved the environments, uh, the music, these, these games boast some of the best soundtracks in an RPG, amazing stuff. Uh, all the stories are very nicely told, uh, nothing overly complex, or a million different kingdoms at war with names you can't pronounce. Just good, honest, simple stories that you can really follow. Uh, great combat. I cannot get enough of the Ease series. We got Ease Books 1 and 2, and then we got Oath and Felgana, which were all beautifully, masterfully executed. And then thankfully, this series continued on to the Vita when Memories of Celseta came out. The Vita was in a really weird spot. It didn't have an awful lot of exclusive content. Uh, Sony was definitely either slowing down or all but dropped it. So it was really nice to have a beautiful exclusive come out. Uh, great graphics, continue that series along, playing as Adol. Uh, taking place in between East Books 2 and then Othan Felgana. Uh, Adol wakes up with amnesia and you are left to transverse the forest of Salceta. Uh, great storyline in this one. And then the brand new uh, Lacrimosa of Dana, which just released a few weeks ago. Haven't had time to start this one up yet, but from what I've seen, it looks to be the best looking in the series so far. Another beautiful collector's edition. My God, I gotta say, this is probably one of the most gorgeous box sets I've seen in quite some time. Uh, some great extras in this. Uh, if you're looking for an action RPG series with blisteringly fast gameplay, amazing soundtracks, great stories, this series has got it all. Fans of action RPGs, Definitely do not miss the E series because it's fantastic. All right, guys, that brings us to the number one spot. And I was pretty tough to come up with a number one, but I look back on it and the sheer amount of time I've spent playing this game, which is like years, uh, close to a decade, the choice was obvious. Now, since the PS2 days, I've loved Odin Sphere. Amazing game. And the remake, I thought, you know, uh, shit, what are they going to do? Uh, make it HD, um, fix a couple of things, some slowdown problems. No, they went back and retooled the entire combat system. Uh, this was the vision that the director had for this game originally. Made real. This is a remake done right. It kind of feels like a different game, to be honest with you. It plays so damn well, so buttery smooth. Those combos you can launch into the air and keep the enemies in the air forever. Uh, really souped up the combat. Everything has been streamlined from the planting system to the uh, Fozons. I mean, this game is truly perfection in my eyes. The story is captivating taking place in the land of Arian, a struggle for power a struggle for this cauldron between five nations I, I couldn't get enough of the story the voice acting was perfect this story really worked emotion out of me i thought it was that good uh, gwendolyn was an awesome character i really loved the puka prince i loved uh, mercedes the the fairy kingdom the, the the demon lord odin man these characters pulled you in and the stories were just powerful the way they interlocked with each other and i loved how the game started off in the attic as a little girl reading the book uh, just a fantastic game through and through made that much better with the power of the vita and playstation 4 this game in hd on the vita screen that oled whew, just pops to life i gotta say this is an amazing game one of my favorite games of all time and without a doubt my favorite action rpg on the vita a true masterpiece made even better uh, this is the collector's edition that came with the ps4 version 
but it's just a beautiful game. I've also got to mention VanillaWare's other two stellar games available on the Vita. Uh, Muramasa is a fantastic action RPG, an updated port of the Wii game. I really enjoyed this game quite a bit. Action RPG done to perfection. The visuals could pass for a Japanese postcard. Kind of a water painting come to life. So bright and vibrant. And they just pop off that OLED screen as well. A really cool gameplay as well. The combat is just fantastic. Based around all these different blades you can find. You can equip two blades at once. So like a long blade and a regular blade. And they kind of break down as the combat goes on. You have to switch them. And then you can bust out some more combos. The juggles are amazing. The storyline is really cool. Involving uh, two different playable characters. Uh, one girl being like a possessed with uh, an evil spirit. The other being a ninja who is got amnesia. And he's on the run for a crime that he doesn't remember committing. So uh, the stories are really cool. And they kind of weave in and out of each other. And the stories, characters at first seem like separate stories. But they kind of go way back the families are intertwined in this this amazing tale so another great action rpg doesn't have the amazing voice acting that kind of pulled me in even more with odin's fear but uh, you can read the text and do just fine uh, dragon's crown is a fantastic action rpg co-op uh, amazing graphics once again i absolutely adored the voice acting in the town and it's just got that big high fantasy vibe man it's just great artwork uh, great voice acting great looking characters excellently drawn they come to life on the vita screen uh, you can gather up your new weapons and armor and gear, always upgrading new gear, and then take it down below to the catacombs and the sewers beneath the city and just go for some intense combat. There's always a ton of enemies on the screen at once. Great combos, a lot of fun loving up your characters. Co-op action RPG gameplay doesn't get any better than Dragon's Crown. Truly a fantastic company, VanillaWare is. I'm such a big fan of the art style. As soon as you see that striking art style, you know it's a VanillaWare game. So. They've pumped out some amazing games. Odin Sphere definitely takes the number one spot as my favorite. Now, what would a Games of War Top 5 video be without some honorable mentions, bringing the total to like 20? Uh, for those of you that get annoyed by more than five games, I really apologize, but once I get started, I can't stop. Child of Light is an amazing RPG that I would not have played due to it being digital. Now, as bad as that sounds, man, I just, back a few years ago, I could not get into the digital thing. Nowadays, I, I'm more open to it because there's always a sale going on. And I'll pick it up on the cheap digitally, and if I like it a lot, chances are it's getting a physical release. Uh, this is a generation that a few years ago we thought, oh god, digital only future. But now that looks even more of a thing in the past, because most good games come physical, and I'm so happy that the direction this is going in. So, Child of Light, I would have ignored, but the Vita version here, and this is the only physical version of this game available, I believe. Uh, an amazing RPG running on the Ubisoft like framework engine that powers Rayman, Rayman Origins. Uh, this is a beautiful action RPG with some stunning graphics, a really nice storyline, a great battle system that kind of takes me back to the timing-based Grandia combat system where there's a meter along the bottom of the screen and you can cancel out enemy attacks by choosing the right time. Environments are beautiful and a lot of fun to explore. The only thing that was kind of cheesy about this game is all the dialogue, like the sentences rhyme. Not a huge deal, but it just felt kind of forced. But other than that, this is an amazing game. Truly one of the best action RPGs available. Don't miss Child of Light just because it's digital. It's, it's an amazing game. Trillion God of Destruction just might be the funniest RPG I've ever played in my life. This is done by key members of the Disgaea team and that humor shows through in spades. I'm telling you, if one of these six overlords that you are trying to vie for the affection of and become closer with and form bonds with do not make you laugh, then you've got no soul. Uh, the main overlord in this game is fighting Trillian, who kind of wipes him out and kills his brother early on, and it's just, he's just crushed. He can't believe he's been defeated. And this Trillian is like the god of destruction. He's got over like a million, I'm sorry, a trillion hit points. And it's up to you to train these overlords and get them stronger, more powerful, and form these bonds. And there's alternate endings depending on which overlord you bond with more and different choices that you make. A really cool battle system that's kind of tactical based. Uh, this is best described as like a tactical based RPG mixed with like some dating sims, some visual novel elements, uh, tactical gameplay. This is an amazing game. Absolutely love the cast. The voice actors in this game deserve an Oscar for their performance. Uh, Trillion is an amazing game. Highly recommended. I gotta give a special mention to God Wars, man. This is an amazing tactical RPG. I said I would start this up once I finished Ever Oasis. I did just that. Uh, voice acting is amazing. Cast, great. Graphics are amazing. Gameplay, tons of fun. Strategy RPG through and through. Cinema's great storyline. If you are into tactical RPGs, you owe it to yourself to pick up God Wars. It's a very strong title. Everything is really solid, and I'm really enjoying it. Hope you guys have enjoyed taking a look at my favorite top five Vita games. It's been a long time coming. I'm glad to be back. Uh, no more shortage of videos moving straight ahead. This is going to be a busy month in October. Lots of horror games we're going to be talking about. Thank you guys for watching. As always, in Games of War, is nothing without you.